Let's bring in Anton Schutt, Senior Portfolio Manager at Menden Capital with the stock angle here. And Chris Murphy, Co-Head of Derivative Strategy at Susquehanna, has some options uh, ideas as well. Dom Chu is here for the ride. Welcome, everybody. Anton, let me start with you. And um, you both know these banks better than anybody, and that also raises uh, some people's questions of, did you have any inkling that these problems were coming? And if so, why not? Okay. Well, first of all, um, you know, if you, you think about the deposit structure of the banks that have failed, um, you know, what they had in common was very lumpy venture capital deposits or lumpy crypto deposits. And I had owned some of these banks in the past. Um, I haven't owned a number of them in, in quite some time because I was really worried about the deposit structure. I was worried about whether they were going to leave or rise. And really, at the end of the day, that's not why these banks failed. These banks failed because there was a run on the banks. And, you know, the one point I really want to make here, going back to the financial crisis, right? I'm old enough. I, I ran money then, saw it then, and lived through it with scars on my back. But at the end of the day, when you create a run on a bank, that's illegal. In most states, there are laws against it. Let's see some DAs come out and do something about it. Let's see the SEC deal with social media. Social media did not exist in 2007 and 8 the way it does today mm -hmm. and the way they're creating these runs. This is illegal to create a run. And by the way, you know, the, the, we can solve this by guaranteeing all of the deposits um, of all the banks for some period of time. We did the same thing during the financial crisis, and we came out of it just fine. And, and look, at the end of the day, it's not the taxpayers taking losses. It's the FDIC, which is funded by the banks. Yes, it's backstopped by the government. There's lots of money there. Uh, I, I think this is an anomaly. I think the way these companies were funded, but unfortunately, Anton, was poor. And then there was— Let, yeah, let, me, let me ask you this. So it seems more fundamentally problematic to me than, than that in the sense of they had deposit, deposit explosions the last couple of years. They had to put those deposits into something to earn a spread. Yeah. They were encouraged in some ways by the way capital works to put them in things like treasuries and mortgage-backed securities— and then we jacked up rates and caused huge losses on those. What, what, I mean, this, this problem runs deep. I don't see how this doesn't implicate yeah. almost the entire banking system. Well, I think it implicates well beyond the banking system, right? I mean, rates are transitory, inflation's transitory. I mean, you're running a portfolio. What are you doing? Okay, well, bonds are safe. They're U.S. government bonds. But it, it's still a deposit problem. If, if you did not have runs on these banks, they wouldn't have failed. The capital raise was unfortunately sure. poorly executed. Okay. You know, confidence went down. So you don't think the fact that they just had losses, like, in other words, you're saying only because they had to realize the losses it was a problem, but you don't think SVB did anything wrong management-wise here? I, I, look, I don't like it. I mean, I, I think it's not smart. I think when you're matching uh, securities portfolios against securities that are not particularly liquid or, or have a lot of risk, that's not right, right? Silvergate didn't fail because... You know, it had a, it had uh, crypto problems. It had problems because deposits left, and they had securities portfolios. Same thing. I mean, you know, that's what's happened here is the securities portfolios went out. They took duration risk. They took illiquidity risk. Maybe you know, municipals, and, and then they didn't have the funding. So lumpy funding is bad. And the, you know, they did. They definitely made mistakes running those portfolios. There's no doubt about it. Let me leave it this way for for people who are looking at these declines today, are, do you see this as a buying opportunity then? If we now have this backstop in place, would you, I mean, are there any of these exposed names you would avoid? Or do you think across the board, the stock declines are overdone and people who share your opinion should be buying them? Well, first of all, um, you know, I run a mutual fund. Um, please send money. I will, I will go out and spend it. <laughs> there, there, there are plenty of good good companies out there. So yes, I would, I would be buying it if I, if I had, you know, inflows. And I think at the end of the day, it is about individual companies, right? It, it's, it's about how those balance sheets are structured. And most of my companies have good core funding, right? They have checking accounts, they have business accounts, they're, they're, you know, important players in their own communities. They've reached out, they've talked to their customers. Those customers want to leave those deposits there. Yeah. But I do think it's really critical that we ensure all deposits, let everybody feel comfortable, calm down. Uh, and by the way, all those securities that everybody hates that are, you know, have losses on, look, they creep back every quarter until the securities book winds down. And, and I think that's also why the FDIC guaranteed all the deposits, because they're getting that securities book, which will hit hard. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anton, thank you very much for coming on today. It's good to see you.